Hey everybody, this is Jen from Scan and Cut Canvas and Scan Help on Facebook. This is Brother's new Paste Setter Simply Applique program. I'm only using the trial version, therefore I cannot save or save as, which means I cannot cut any of the things that we save. Oop, there's our text. Um, we're going to go through and talk about the buttons here, what they do. Um, this is the text button. You click it, and it'll bring up your text. Okay, so let's type in something. All right, so there it is. If I want to change this, I come here. Um, let's see what that one looks like. Okay, so I like it, but it's not coming up over here. You have to click Apply. And then it'll take a little while. Ooh, that really is big. So let's decrease the size of this so that we can see what we're doing in here. Okay. So you want to join these together. Okay. Well, oh man, I don't want to have to do them all separately. Is there a way that I can do this? Yes, double click. Then you grab onto these little diamonds here. And that will move the letters that lay behind the diamonds. So that you can grab and move them all at one time. Okay. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's okay. Because again, I cannot save this, so it does not matter what it looks like. Okay. So let's drop this one. That's what that little button does. And if you resize it too much, you will get a little, um, a little warning will come up. So if you're trying to arch your words, this is how you do it. You grab the little pink parts, and that will allow you to arch your words, okay? And then if you need to move your little, you want to move your little O, you should be able to do that, and it's not doing it. Let me grab it right here. There we go. And put that up on your line. That's how you go about doing all of that. And then, of course, you can change all of this stuff over here. When you're done, like if I wanted to put a 5 in there, I usually just hit Enter. And that will allow you to do that, okay, instead of going and hitting um, Apply. But it's however you want to do it, okay? So again, that's how you do that. All right, so let's move on here. Now, if I have this and I want to add a design, this is the designs that come pre-programmed in this software. All right, so let's add the little giraffe because he's pretty gosh darn cute. Well, I just clicked the button. Where did it go, right? You have to click your mouse and drag it. Let it go. So that I left clicked and I still held on to it and I drug it. Okay. Come up here and get my select arrow so that I can move this little guy. I'm going to move him down there. Let's decrease the size of our screen here so that I can see what I'm doing. All right, so let's go back into our fonts here. Oops. Okay, and let's actually make this correct. So let's move the L's so that it doesn't look so haphazard. Make it look somewhat nice, even though we can't save it. because we need to remove some stitching. Okay, so I like that, but I know that I don't want those extra stitches behind there. So let's try this. Let's try, highlight everything, and we're going to right click and see if it comes up in our right click options menu. No, it does not. Hmm. Wonder why. I'll tell you why. You don't want this in here because it lays on top. You don't need the stitches removed from there. You do, however, want them removed from the hello. Oh, come on. 
just like that. Now let's right click once and you see it came up. Allow the overlap 0 0.0 or 0 0.5 is fine with me. So let's take this little guide down and see what happened. Oh, not too much because there really isn't a whole lot of stitches in there. Okay, but if it was really thick, I'm sure it would have removed a whole lot more. Okay, come on. Whoa. There we go. And you have to be careful when you use a slide button. Sometimes you can slide it off into oblivion. So use those arrows. Okay. Not 17. Let's do 32. That's better. Okay. So we have this, and it looks pretty good, right? So if we want to embroider this, we're just going to save save it to your file or save it to your stick so you can embroider export the image export as an FCG or SVG or export as an FCM I don't know I can't do any of that so I can't tell you what it does okay so if I was to save this as an FCM technically I should then be able to bring it back into the program and then create a design with it a lined design just like this okay but I can't tell you what it looks like I can't tell you what the cut lines are I can't tell you any of that because I don't have access to this so I can't tell you how well this program works so um, I know a lot of people have asked for my input on it. I will tell you that for $300, you wouldn't catch me buying it because I can't, can't test it. I have no idea. Okay, so let's say I come from a basis of doing using the scan and cut. So there's one layer. Come on, it's not responding. So I have all of these layers. This little nostril disappeared. Not quite sure where that went. Maybe it's behind there. I have all of these layers. There needs to be a better way of doing this. Because if I have to split apart all of these layers, where am I going to do this at? Am I going to take this over to Canvas and do this? Well, that is something that we will um, try to import into Canvas here in a few minutes. Oh, wait, no, because I can't save it. Shoot. But I know that to do all of these lines is going to be really difficult. And I see an error right there. But to... I don't want that. Do you see all of these little pieces that are coming out of this? You have little pieces here, 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 up here, in here. And they're not joined, they're not unioned, but you have all of these layers. <laughs> We're still pulling apart layers. I can't see how this is going to work um, if you save this as a cut file for sure cuts a lot or for um, the scan and cut look at all those little pieces I think that may present an issue but again I cannot test it so I cannot tell you and I'm surely not paying $300 for this program I already have one that is tried and true and that's uh, the sure cuts a lot program within brilliance but look at all these little pieces right here 
Um, I'm sure Canvas is probably going to throw out an error message because of all of these little pieces. Let's try pulling the eyes apart. How many? Okay. So again, more tiny little pieces. Okay, so then I went to save time because it takes quite a long time to change all of this to the um, applique material to see what it looks like. Well, as you see, <laughs> hmm, how do I want to say this? I'm trying to be polite. Um, it's You can't tell what's being sent to the cutter. Um, and I figured I would just try it this way because this is what you do with other um, applique pieces. Um, this is how you send it. So I thought, well, even though these are the ones that are built in, let's try it this way and see if um, this is just a fluke and, you know, maybe I was doing it wrong. But it doesn't appear so. Um, so if you just have things that come from this program, which the fonts came from this program, the little zebra came from this program, and you have them in there, and you click scan and cut, because it says you're supposed to be able to do that, to send it right to the cutter, you can't do that. You see all of these pieces. Well, the scan and cut has a really hard time with layers. It, it doesn't work like that. Um, and then if you are in this program only, and you're trying to break this apart, or even if you take it to Canvas, I foresee some issues with all of these little pieces and maybe canvas will just throw you up that error that says there's you know just pieces are too small so they were removed and then it will pull that out for you but you have to remember to pull all of these pieces apart and what if you have or you want to make this like an uh, an eight inch zebra and these are two inches so your overall design is ten inches what are you going to do with all these excess pieces do you see what I'm saying? In Canvas, which is Brother's native program, you can't send it to the page like we do in Shortcuts a lot. We can't have three or four pages open in Canvas like we do there. So I'm trying to be fair, but I'm just really confused as to why this looks like this. Um, I'm not sure. Again, I cannot save it, so I cannot tell you. This is what... Um, it looks like if you send it over um, to be cut on the scan and cut um, by hitting the scan and cut button, there's a missing hole right there. Um, so I'm sure that would be cut. Um, and then this is what it looks like if you turn it all into applique material, which, by the way, is really difficult because I have tried every which way till Sunday to get applique material to save somewhere. Um, because it will be used an awful lot, and I can't get that to um, save for me. Um, you have to come up here, type in an A, select it, find, and then it will highlight it up here, always down here, this position. And then you have to double-click it, and that will put it. Then you have to select it again, come up here, search, double-click it. It's kind of a lot of work. Okay, let's bring in our own FCM. And this reads FCMs. It does not read SVGs or anything like that. Um, so if you have something like that, go into Canvas, save it as an FCM, and then import it. So right here. So I've imported a little basketball. Again, I come to my hoop, fit to hoop. Now, if I want to change this um, to an applique, again, we'll go to Tools, Convert to Applique. Now, here's why sometimes auto-digitizing isn't the greatest if you don't know what you're doing, okay? So it's supposed to convert this to an applique. So I'm taking, because again, I do not know, that these will all be pieces of material. Okay, but again, I don't know. I can't save. But I don't like the way that stitching is. It's too thick for me. So what I do is I come over here, and I will start to mess with it until it gives me kind of what I want. I don't like <clears throat> my lines going over each other. And yes, it may create gaps right here. That's fine with me. 
you do it to what you think you like. Okay, that looks a lot better. So then what I do is I just come in here and I take a look at it. See, now I can see daylight between there and that's Oops, that's good for me. Okay. So then you can go ahead, I guess, and save it. But if you need to do some editing, there's the line shape tool. Okay. And this will allow you to note edit lines. All right. And I'm going to do some just some wild editing so that you can see the changes that are made. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Now do you see that? So I modified those. And it really changed the look of this. It removed the one line there. And it brought this one way down here, but also removed that other line. And I want to show you something. You need to be careful with this. Like, I don't like the double lines, but sometimes they're needed. Because if you go removing too many or combining them, you can cause your applique to completely disappear. Let's just make this really funky. Okay, see if that makes it disappear. Okay, yes. Now, so you see that has totally disappeared because the lines came across and were touching. So they kind of melted into one. So now your applique is completely gone. So be very careful when you start to node edit if you have not done digitizing before. That's my only, I guess my only clue. If you don't know how to node edit and fix the lines, just be careful, okay? If you don't like how thick they are, just come over into your properties and change it that way. But um, my best suggestion is to try to get some uh, a good type of digitizing program and start doing it in there. Um, and you can find some good ones really cheap. But let's finish going through here. Come on. Okay, so here's all of this, your copy, your cut, paste, all that stuff. Your grid, if you want a grid on the back, it's up to you. Your add, your design, um, this is really, they have some really cute stuff in here. And that's how you do it is you just click and you drag across. So if you wanted to add like a little monster in here playing basketball, just click and drag. Okay, so I still have my left mouse button, and then I released it, and that should bring, yep, the little monster up here. Okay, but um, this is when it shuts down on me, when the program shuts down is when I try to, like, remove stitches in these. It tends to want to shut down. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. Oh, the background. <laughs> you can select a fabric, but that will make your entire background that color. So let's try, <laughs> try it. Um, let's try this one. Beige roses. All right. Woo! Okay. If you don't like what that's done, come here to select color and choose white, and that will take it right back to where it was. All right. Let me do selection. Let me get rid of this. Monsters. And to do this, I'm right-clicking once on them to select them. And then our left-clicking once to select them. Then right-clicking brings up this menu. And then I just delete it, okay? So that's the background. The garment. Now, the garment templates are really cool. Um, <clears throat> if I wanted to put this design on a um, baby romper, or, yeah, this is the baby romper. If I wanted to put it on a guy's shirt. Well, I can select the color right here. See, it's a black shirt. So I can put OK. Well, I don't use that size tool in there. I just come up and kind of do my own thing out here. And then reposition it. Okay, so that looks good. Then here... 
change it to your applique and then you can change whatever if you want it that color to be you can go through change it up there let's make it a little smaller so it fits come into your hoop Oops, not to your hoop. Center it like that. Come back to home. Hit your 3D. Now click the top part of your hoop to remove it. Let's bring it out a little bit. Not that much. To about there. So there. There's your design on a shirt. So if you want to take a screen snip of that so that you can show your customer, hey, look at what I can do on this shirt for you. Um, create maybe a, a text, do that rounding of the text, and then, you know, this way on, on that. That's how you do it. So these mock-ups are really cool. That's one thing I really like about this. Um, but that's how you do that. Let's keep on a moving. Let's bring our hoop back in. Fit it to our hoop again. There we go. The ruler, self-explanatory, to uh, measure things. This is the zooming and panning for your uh, screen here. Um, you have your thread charts to use brother embroidery, all that good stuff. Come on, can you get down? Your range alignment tools, all that stuff. Um, if you bring in something that, let's say you've used an FCM, um, for HTV and it's mirrored and you need to flip it back right here's how you do that okay um, and then any rotations that you may need to do tools we've already um, done this page preview that just kind of gives you I guess what the page looks I don't know I haven't found a use for that anymore uh, yet um, but these yes you can edit whatever you want to do and then your view will allow you to check what windows that you want up um, the palette which is this thing right here uh, the simulator which is down here your stitches um, and this is one thing that you should probably actually use a digitizing program to understand how to change colors and color stops and that stuff if they allow it in this program I'm not sure I haven't tested it that far because I can't save um, preferences again environment your grid um, if you want to change what that looks like you do all of that in your view okay um, you can change all of that good stuff your uh, embroidery formats um, any type of uh, like uh, what do I want to say this back here your map what it looks like um, where you want your uh, bracket for your hoop like mine uh, is on the side so that's how I use it. Ah, oh, come on, come back. Okay, but just be careful not to do this because you can easily lose it. Try to use the arrow tools once again. Okay, all right. Now, <clears throat> I said I was going to do an apples to apples comparison. To me, this is very important. I brought in um, a PES file. So this is a straight PES file um, from, I think it's Boutique Embroidery. Now, according to this, we should be able to save the uh, lines. So you come in and you're going to change some stuff in here, and I'll show you how to do that. And you should be able to save it to look like something like that okay well we're gonna try it so this first one I went ahead and I'm gonna change the color of that stitch to the brother embroidery applique material which is 100 okay so I did that so now let's come down here to this one well it's kinda of the same file but it has that thing across its nose I don't want that so let's look for the belly stitches. 
Okay? That one is right here. That's one we're going to need because it was missing in that other one. So I need to see, let's see here. I want to change that to this. Okay? So now we're going to highlight it all. Oops. Hopefully, let me make sure I did that right. Highlight everything. There we go. And we're going to come to Tools, and we're going to click Scan and Cut. Oh, boy. That did not give me what I wanted. Let's delete this one. Okay, so that's a little bit better. However, because these are two different pieces, I know that that is also going to cut two different pieces. I want the entire thing. I want it all cut as one. I don't want to have to piece this together. But I know that this is going to come in as two different pieces. Okay? Because this file is two different pieces. So how can I join this together? Because I want it joined together. In this program, you cannot do that. Okay? So that is one huge strike against this program. And I know that these are cut lines because I know that this right here are two different stitch files. So for $300, which that's what I was told this program costs, unless of course it goes on sale, but I will do the apples to apples comparison right now. Okay, so here's the same little alligator. Brought it up. Okay. This is in Embrilliance. So I have highlighted this stitch file, which is that first one that I highlighted in the Brother program as well. I'm going to change it. Applique position. Okay. Click Save All. I've already done all of this. Okay because this was one that I first worked on. Oops. All right, okay, I'm sorry. And then I come down and I find the blue belly piece. And I click through the same thing I went through here. I came up to the applique, applique position, and save all. And when you do this in Embrilliance, even though only that blue thing was highlighted, it tends to save the entire file for you, okay? But we're going to go check that out. Okay, so I have sure cuts a lot up. Again, apples to apples. So here's the first one. There's just the belly file. And look, so it brought up everything. Okay, well, let's go put the uh, entire belly piece. Let's see what that was. Oh, it's the same thing again. So it saves the entire thing for me. Well, we only need one, so let's focus on this little guy. Okay? Let's blow him up. And we can either do it this way, increase the size, or I can increase the mat, because I really don't want to increase the size if I want to keep it as an applique, so let me show you how to do that. We'll import this one. So if this is my applique and I cannot change the size, I just come in here and increase it to 200. Okay, so now let me grab my brush. Ooh, that's too big. Decrease the size a bit. Yeah, that's about right. So let's time ourselves. How long does it take us to fix this file? Okay. To make it a whole entire piece that we can use in our cutter and not have it freak out. Hang on, I gotta decrease the size a little bit. Not have it freak out because there's a ton of layers or there's all that jagged stitching that makes it go crazy. I see a little white piece right there. Okay, so let's take this back out so I can see what I'm doing. You're gonna highlight everything, go to Path and Union, and that will make it all one, just like you see right here. Click on Preview, there is your perfect little cut file, all done in a matter of seconds. This maintained its size because I did not change it. 
But because I have the full editing software right here in Shortcuts a lot, I can change it, I can fix it, and I can make it a complete cut file. Shortcuts a lot is fifty dollars. Let me find in Brilliance for us. In Brilliance, the digitizing program is a maximum of $170 because there's usually coupons out there and Brian sometimes throws out really cool deals on it but this is just in brilliance people use a lot of different programs but I'm telling you as an apples to apples comparison and um, this is only if you want to digitize um, the here's essentials at 140 which is again the most I didn't pay near that and the other day it was on sale for 109 I think so you're talking a price of 159 to a price of up to, because this is with sure cuts a lot and essentials. Um, you're talking a price of 159 to 189 max right here, to uh, 220 max right here, but more along the lines of about 189 right here for sure cuts a lot coupled with this program okay so that is my apples to apples comparison um, for those programs as compared to this because as you see this does not save appropriately and there is no way to correct it so far that I have found that will give you an entire complete cut file all right even from the this that is their in program file um, this is what happened when I chose the scan and cut button from their brothers paste setter simply applique program files this is what came up okay so from what I have seen what I have used um, I find some some kind of issues with it um, and for the price tag I think that possibly they need to um, do a little bit of work on it um, to make it uh, a little bit better for you guys uh, for that price point but again it is my opinion only and I am only giving it because I was asked um, it's unfortunate I really wish that I would have been able to get in and save and actually use it to see how well it works but from what I've been able to use um, my opinion is it needs work um, if you guys have any questions, you can find me over at Scan and Cut Canvas and Scalhelp on Facebook. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be a discussion about, you know, this and the things that it does or does not do. Um, and I don't want to leave out the people at So What Pro. I don't know if they have digitizing, but I know So What Pro is only like 60 bucks, So that's an even cheaper option, okay? But there are options out there um, if this does not appeal to you um, but just know that we at scan and cut canvas and scal help are there to help anybody with anything all right guys and also I know some people will say well this is a one program only not true you still have to have a program to create your FCMs to bring them in there in here so you do actually need two programs um, which is will either be canvas or it will be sure cuts a lot so if you have um, one program you, you still you need two programs to utilize this program fully all right guys you guys have a great day um, make sure you head on over to the Facebook page if you have any questions thanks